What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Dermy Wormy. I'm coming at you with another video and it was a few weeks ago when the Hollywood Reporter reported on uh, the fact that Disney has made its money back via Disney Star Wars and their Star Wars deal. They're making profit guys. They're doing wonderful. They're they're high flying making all this stuff. All the movies did fantastic. They did well. Disney's been making profit over profit ever since the Star Wars deal. Finally, it's working. It's great, guys. And when this story was coming out, I called BS. I did not believe it one bit. I was having a hard time seeing it. The problem is there's a lot of moving parts in the background. I didn't know how their taxes were being done. It was a very valid possibility that maybe they made some money, but I, I was finding it very hard to believe that Disney Star Wars is actually making any sort of profit at this point. Well, from Forbes, uh, kind of looks like they weren't. Disney Star Wars box office profits fail to cover cost of buying Lucasfilm. Now, this is solely from their box office uh, side of things. And we'll come over here to that part place to break down some of the numbers uh, because they do a much more concise, fast way of doing this. And we can hop back over to Forbes here in a bit just to show you the chart because they have a wonderful chart on there that shows you how bad it truly is. But when they were breaking down these numbers, they did not take into account a handful of things. They specifically focused in on the box office. They didn't take into account the Disney Plus series, whether that be Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Boba Fett, those shows. They also don't take into account other aspects of Lucasfilm whether that be the failure that is the Indiana Jones movie or let's say Willow, for example, that was so bad it got canceled mid-season one and then has been destroyed and never to be seen again. That's how bad that was. So you, you have that. They also don't take into account parks or merchandising into all this. So th there is questions on have they made their money back? Have they not? But when it comes to solely the box office itself, they're far from actually making the money. But when you start breaking down the numbers, it gets really telling. Back in 2012, the Walt Disney Company announced it was purchasing Lucasfilm from George Lucas for $4.5 billion, with Disney paying approximately half of the consideration in cash and issuing approximately 40 million shares at closing. And this was back in 2012. That's when the signing went down. And since then, they put out roughly six movies or so. They were actually obligated to put out a handful of movies, and they did that so far. And you start getting what was shown via the actual reporter from Forbes when she started breaking down, uh, you know, digging deeper into this, trying to figure out how this all worked out. And it, it, it was very interesting. Carolina Reeb at Forbes has not only crunched some of the numbers, but she's also provided production budget information for these films and concludes that the films have not recovered the cost of purchase. Now, I do believe there was another aspect of the numbers she did not have access to, but it was very interesting. When I did read the Forbes article, she dug deep into this, guys. Like, she was figuring out that Disney, when they make these movies, they use subsidiary companies to make it even harder to figure out how the all money is going, what, what's it all going to, and then these subsidiary companies actually take the heat for it. I do believe that the, the company that does, I want to say it was either Rise of Skywalker or the last Jedi still paying off the uh, damages that were accrued from said movie. But Reed reveals that Disney spent $567.3 million on The Force Awakens. However, because they filmed in the United Kingdom, the company received a significant tax return, which reduced the net cost of the film to $475.1 million. Similarly, Reed reports that the cost of The Last Jedi was $319.5 million. The Rise of Skywalker cost was $448.1 million. Rogue One cost $247.8 million. And Solo cost twenty. Two hundred eighty-seven point two million. Reed then comes to conclusion that The Force Awakens had five hundred fifty-nine point six million in profit. The Last Jedi had three hundred forty-eight point six million. Rogue One had two hundred eighty-one point five million, and The Rise of Skywalker had eighty-nine million. Solo lost money though at ninety point seven million, and that, that's where we'll come back over to the Forbes article real quick. So I could scroll down here real, really fast just to show you her chart she has here because the chart's actually really, really good. 
because you see it right here you see like how much they actually spent you know the the next spending the box office share how much they actually made they they break it down relatively well and easy for you to see the green money is the actual profit that they get from all this the green money is the actual money that they truly made after accounting for every little thing that they ended up spending so when you take a look at let's say for example force awakens here they made five hundred and fifty nine point six thousand dollars, I believe it was, in actual profit. Even though the movie made about a bi I think it was a billion dollar movie. Even if the movie made that much money, they didn't get that much money back. And that's been a big thing about all this. When you had Disney come out and say, "Hey, they've been very successful. They they're they've made their money." And when you get the people going around saying Disney Star Wars is successful, I mean, look how much money they're making at the box office. The reality is it's not that much. They're actually taking in a whole lot less. And when you solo is a good example of this. Yeah, they might have spent they spent a lot more money on solo and then they lost a lot of money when it came to solo itself. It, it wasn't a good success. And they and you can also see it here. They started losing money. They started losing interest in all this. And it really shows by the time you get over here to the rise of Skywalker. Yeah, it made, made more money than solo. That's not a hard bar to uh, cross. But you can see just how abysmal their actual return on investment truly was. And like I said, it doesn't take into account the marketing process, uh, cost of this. I completely forgot that that was the other aspect of this, that they aren't taking into account here. The marketing for each one of these movies also cuts into that net profit that they actually make on each one of these movies. You have to believe that Force Awakens or TLJ or heck even rise of skywalker those had massive uh marketing budgets behind them because they were trying to make sure people went to go see these movies they wanted to try to rebrand the whole star wars aspect they they had to have been they had to have cost hundreds upon thousands 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 borderline maybe a million dollars in marketing from time to time it's doubtful okay I might be taking that a bit too far, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of marketing here for each one of these movies. And they're probably not seeing a profit on return. Then the other aspect of this is the merchandising and the hotels and every other aspect of what's been going on with Disney star Wars. That does start bringing a wrinkle into all this. When it comes to the merchandising though, this is a key aspect of merchandising. Okay. When it comes to the merchandising, the older merchandise still sells. So when they put out their retro series stuff, that stuff sells by the bundle. Like people do like that. People like the older retro styled stuff, uh, and, but people aren't really buying the newer stuff. Uh, for example here, I know this is a big point of contention back when uh, Obi-Wan was coming out. The Reba lightsaber from Hazlabs, this, this didn't get funded. This is a lightsaber from a Star Wars series that did not get funded. Nobody wanted to buy it. Nobody wanted to push it. And it, it barely even cr got close to the actual final target. So your newer model, your newer toys don't sell, but your older toys do sell. So this then starts saying, okay, how does your marketing budget actually work? How does the merchandising deals actually work? Are you, how much money are you making on merchandising? That is very important. That's something that you do need to know before you can say that Disney Star Wars is profitable. Then on top of that, another thing, Let's not mince words here. The Galactic Scar Cruiser. Yeah, that might have been a hotel over at Disney World, I want to say it was. Thing is, though, the Galactic Scar Cruiser was also very much pushed by Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm had a huge hand in actually pushing the Galactic Star Cruiser. It was an actual part of the canon. What they did there, how that was going to go forward. It, it, so this failing as epically as it did does cut into the overall cost and the overall marketing budgets and pro probably merchandising budgets as well when it does come to Disney Star Wars. Plus, like I mentioned before, this whole thread does not even account for Indiana Jones or the Willow series, which are two other aspects that they bought when they got Lucasfilm. The Indiana Jones movie failed miserably. I know it's being reported that it lost them about $134.2 million at the box office, I'm willing to bet they, this lost them a lot of money altogether. I'm willing to place a huge bet that this movie probably cost them about $300 million by the end of it. Then when you take a look at Willow, Willow was a Disney Plus series that was so bad, yet it 
like I said at the beginning, it was so bad. It got canceled during season one and then was completely removed from the platform. All signs deleted because they took one of those sweetheart deals similar to what Max did when it came to, I think it was the Batgirl movie. I could be forgetting the name of it. A very similar deal that they took there. They took for Willow so that they had to completely remove Willow never to be seen again. These are aspects that you need to take into account to all this. So how does this all play out all we know for sure, as it stands right now, when it comes to the box office, Disney's been lying to us all, and they have yet to actually turn a true profit on any of these movies. And I am so happy to have this data out there. It, it is a wonderful time to be alive, but I'm going to leave it there, guys. Let me get you guys' thoughts on all this down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out, friends, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video, go live, guys. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.